Thank you so much. And, 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 uh, you know, as you can tell, we're, we're taking our time walking through the various products, because I think that, um, you know, depending on what issue you're troubleshooting and what angle you're looking at that, um, you generally can, um, you know, you get your, your hints pretty quick. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do sort of the last, uh, last bit on that, you know, just to recap where we are, right. We have, we have a, an application that's used both by uh, airport rental desks, as well as, you know, handheld phones by customers, you know, booking cars, checking into cars, what have you. You've had performance issues reported. Um, you know, first thing we did is we used our, um, our, our desktop based tool to figure out what the, the experience was of the um, people in the rental desks at the airports. There we found um, initially a security vulnerability or a security issue that happened. We looked into that by looking at NetFlow that turned out to be a red herring. Then we've looked at infrastructure, right? And the infrastructure seems to be okay, but Brandon is hinting at potentially other issues. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna dive into the packets. Now, to take a look at that, what, what we're bringing to bear here is our AppResponse 11 tool. AppResponse 11 is a tool that, um, that can collect packets. It can collect packets directly on the wire, can be deployed as an appliance, can also be uh, deployed as an OVA. Um, it um, is capable of getting packets from a packet broker. It's able to sniff them um, itself, what have you. Um, the, the point being is, is that this is not just a packet vault. Right, it can store packets, but it also analyzes packets and it can analyze um, underlying protocols. It has capabilities of doing a decrypt. And the specific purposes of this is to analyze how well applications are working on the wire. Now we have AppResponse 11 deployed throughout our, uh, our environment. We have, um, uh, we're, we're capturing traffic both in the eight, uh, three AWS data centers. We have uh, the SQL backend um, also inspected, although we won't be looking at that today. And we're also monitoring um, the traffic from the synthetic tests that, uh, that Brennan already uh, discussed, right? So we have, we essentially have, have full coverage uh, from a packet level. Um, we also have historical packets. It's actually an interesting uh, point I should mention that a lot of our customers do spend time uh, um, using our packet vault for security investigations. It turns out it's very powerful for that, right? The, you know, we can store up to two petabytes worth of packets per appliance. And so generally when um, things hit the proverbial fan, um, that can be often the single source of truth uh, that you can, uh, that you can sort of rely on. So let me, let me start out by, by hopping right in. Um, so what you're looking at here is the, is the app response dashboard. And, and the dashboard is now at this point, we have no, uh, no filter selected. We're looking at all of the traffic. Uh, first thing that, that I want to point out, right? So we're looking at an hour's worth of traffic. This is uh, essentially the derived metrics uh, from the packet data. What I have on the upper left-hand corner is the average user response time. This is the response time that we analyze the user is seeing, and that is around two seconds, two and a half, 2.7 seconds. Basically, that's awful. And what I'm looking at is the average for our rental application, right? So this isn't even, right? So somewhere there is a problem. Um, and we don't yet know where, and we're going to try to try to dig into that. Uh, round trip time seems sort of on the slow end side, but not crazy. What is even worse is if I look at my total connection requests, they're somewhere in the middle. It's it, I've got twenty one thousand connection requests that came in that last hour. Four thousand of those have failed, right? So there's clearly that's um, something's going going wrong. Though. So this is a traffic analysis tool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to pop into the um, uh, uh, into the insights menu. This will go. There we go. Uh, here. So the first thing I want you to see, right? So this is a tool that focuses on protocol analysis from an application level. So we get TCP/IP analysis, IP conversations, TCP connection analysis, all the way to web transaction analysis, which we'll be doing quite a bit, bit of today. Database queries, void. Um, you know, in a variety of different um, different applications. Now, obviously, um, you know, we're troubleshooting a specific scenario. I'm going to go ahead and um, take that away, pop in the IP address for AWS uh, um, East region. I got that copied. There you go. So I hit the query. I'm going to TCP connections by server IP. Let that load for a second over there. Um, and right now I'm looking at 
just my East region, right? 18.209, 231.87. 913 connections. I'm looking at the last 15 minutes here. This is the default view. And what I'm already starting to notice is four seconds, four and a half seconds of average user response time, right? So I'm just focusing on what the server in the East region um, uh, is, is seeing. Now, worse though, is 213 failed connections out of the 913 that came in. Now, what I'm doing here is I've, I have, if you look at the bottom of the screen, I've got my TCP connections. I'm gonna go sort those by server response time. And what we're already seeing is the top connection, individual connection took over 12 seconds to respond, right? So this is, this is bad, right? This is, I wouldn't wait around for a 12 second response time to happen. Now, if you take a look at that true plot there in the center, and what I'm gonna do here is, I'm going to go and take a look at replotting that in a go server response time. Now I'm adding that. Take out user response time. And there we go. So what I have here is over the last 15 minutes, every individual um, connection request that was made to this server um, in the East region plotted out by the server response time seen from the server's perspective. What I see is well, there's a whole cluster there early on where everything is working just fine. I see a whole number of them that are very slow. I see a number of them that are topping out. It's basically not doing great, right? We're seeing that this is, um, it's all over the map. It's scattered, it's inconsistent. And most of it is very, um, very poor. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of the screen, you see a number of tabs there. I'm gonna take a look at the, um, the top client list. I mean, you have clients, you have servers, there we go. Um, top client list, you can see approximately the same thing, right? We see um, all the way on the right-hand side, long connection setup time. There's a number of other vital stats there. Slow server response times, right? So time to set up the connection. We're gonna break this down in a second for you, but also time for the server to respond um, is, um, is suffering. So East is clearly in pain. Now we already saw when we look at the portal dashboard that central wasn't really showing anything. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the IP addresses central over there. I'm just gonna remove that one and there we go. Give that a second and yes. So essentially we're confirming that in the last 15 minutes, no traffic hit the central data center, the central region. Um, we can go ahead and so this is we're looking it's actually we're looking at the the view for a uh, server right now so let's go ahead and change that out here and so essentially what i've just done for you is i've gone ahead and i have filtered on all traffic in and out to the the virtual ip address for the central region i'm also getting nothing so not only is nobody making connections this server in the AWS region is effectively um, is effectively seeing absolutely nothing. So go ahead. There. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the West IP address. We did see some traffic there. Let that load. I'm going to do TCP connections. And what I'm selecting here is essentially I'm asking for TCP connections coming into the server. And uh, here we have it. Um, this is my, my West region. The West region is basically doing fine, but it's not seeing any traffic, right? So I've got 68 milliseconds response times there, which is roughly what I would expect to see. And Phil was seeing similar things. The point being is there are 23 connection requests. So very obviously, um, very obviously something isn't working right. The other thing I can see is that I'm essentially communicating with only one client, right? So there's nobody, right? There's a unique IP, uh, unique client that piece is only, uh, only one. So, so at this point, I have effectively confirmed what the others have already seen in some of their telemetry. East seems to be getting a ton of traffic and it's really slow. Central and West are basically seeing nothing. Um, you know, just for for the uh, uh, for the academics of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at it from the perspective of a client. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Atlanta IP address. There you go. And there we go. So 
I'm going to talk you through this real brief. Um, so I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to do, so I've, I've looked at server side. I'm going to look at some of the clients. I, I'm, uh, obviously, that's you know, a different perspective. Um, the, uh, uh, the Atlanta desk um, is one that was specifically complaining about slow response times. What I want to do is I want to, I want to again, take a look at TCP connections, but this time it's going to be TCP connections by client IP, which is on the upper left-hand uh, corner there. So I'm not looking at it from a server perspective. So let that load for a second. I'm back to a similar dashboard. What I can see is response times are slow. I'm currently looking at a graph of user response times. Um, I'm getting an average response time of two seconds, roughly, give or take. But watch again, 55 connections have failed out of the 223. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that payload retransmissions at around 1.7%. That may not seem like a lot, but when retransmissions go over anything higher, higher than, um, than one, uh, things are in a bad shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in and take a look at server response times. And let's take a look what they look like. And there we go. And take out the user response time. All right. So let that load for a second. So the graph you're seeing right now is from the perspective of the client IP in Atlanta. What is the server response times? Now I can go. Um, I can go a little bit deeper. One thing I should observe is that. The Atlanta host was not running a cryptocurrency miner, right? So we're definitely looking at a host that was reporting performance problems, but was not affected by the security um, issue that we talked about um, before. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check out what server this host is connecting to. So server IPs. There we go. And yeah, take a look at that one. So. You may not recall, but 18.87 is our East Coast um, AWS uh, VIP. That is correct. Atlanta is indeed on the East Coast, so that would explain some of that. Um, now, I can now go ahead and single in, zero in on individual TCP connections. Recall this list that I have here. Um, these are the TCP connections coming from Atlanta, hitting the um, AWS East data center sorted by server response time. The power of this tool is just that we do have all the packets, so we can dive, um, we can dive in and you know analyze these transactions individually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to open up here um, a response time decomposition chart just for that one connection there. So chart, and now what I have here is user response time decomposition. I can break that down by a number of different things. I can look at round trip time. Um, I can try to plot um, individual parts of it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the entire chart. So looking at this chart, right, there was only one transaction. You can do this on a pile of transactions if you want. I'm looking at just one. So let's take a look here, right? This is one transaction broken down, connection setup time, retransmission delay, round trip time, server response time, payload request time, and connection setup time. So Important to note here is that what I have effectively is the slowdown doesn't seem to be in the network. What I'm looking at is that connection setup time and server response time together seems to be causing the majority of the delay. So I'm going to close out of that there. Um, and we can dig deeper. So I'm going to take that transaction again. I'm going to grab raw packets. And let that load. All right. Okay. So what just happened? Um, this right-click menu allows me an ability to download raw packets. I've selected one transaction. I said, gave me the raw packets for that. I can go and open that in Wireshark. What I have done instead, if I opened this in Riverbeds Trace Explorer, from which I could launch get into Wireshark. We're going to go take a look at something called Transaction Analyzer um, in a minute. Um, what we're doing, and so. Um, what I have here, so let me let me first do this. I'm going to select it, the view by transaction. So I've got all the packets here. This could be multiple connections there, connection view. And there's one connection in there. Now, if you take a look real brief at this, we can see stuff that we're all familiar with, right? Syn, Synac is set up. 
Um, this moves all the way through. Now, this connection can be encrypted because we control the server side keys on that. App response will see this traffic in a decrypted fashion. Right? So we can actually do an, an application analysis of that. So we take a look at this. Is there anything what we expect to see? All the way to the get request over there. And then ultimately over there is my 200 coming back, right? So we obviously only have one connection in here because I, I selected one connection when I, when I jumped into this tool. Um, so after this 200, you know, on the left-hand side, I see there was 10.7 seconds that this took, right? So this is a long time, right, for, for, that, to, uh, for that to come back. Um, I want to plot this in another tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in Transaction Analyzer, which allows us to take a look at the inter-packet timings and a variety of other things. So I'm going to go to Single Capture. Okay. Um, so this is this is transaction analyzer. If you look at the upper um, part there, you see a number of tabs. I'm going to go and open a chart that shows me the response times of the individual um, uh, packet timings. There we go. And now I'm going to make a slight change. Visualize by HTTP. Label some of the response codes and all the network traffic. All right, let's take a look at this. So first of all, there's a lot of gray here and gray means, well, time went by. Um, so obviously I'm only, again, looking at one transaction. There's not a lot of craziness happening in one transaction, but um, what I am noticing, right? So look on the, all the way on the right-hand side, you see the IP addresses that are communicating. What you will notice, right? Every arrow up and down is one packet. What you will notice is since Synac happens, um, you see that packets are moving back and forth. They're returned immediately. However, if I take a look sort of at the central region, it appears that it takes the server in AWS a really long time to respond, right? So here's the packet going out, packets coming back, and we see the 200 response codes here further down the line. All right, let's close that. Let's save. All right. Okay, next. So this is powerful, right? Like if I'm looking at a, at a larger number of transactions, you know, um, that can get busy, right? I can't have a lot. We're gonna return to this tool a couple of, um, couple of times, a um, couple of times more. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on a uh, client system on the West Coast. I'm gonna focus in on LAX, which is 10.75.104. Copy that in and there we go. And voila. So what I have here, slow response times, again, two seconds, 400 milliseconds. This is in line with what we had been seeing. Um, I'm gonna pick up server response time for the plot here. Air sort, again, 11 seconds. And this is, you've seen me do this before, server response time in, user response time out. And there we go. And here we go. So we got server response times. Um, again, it seems like to be all over the map. There's a whole number of them, by the way, that are, um, that are, that are doing fine. But notice if I take a look at the individual TCP connections, sort of in the third pane down there below, you notice something. These, this is the IP address for our East region. So I'm gonna grab those packets. I'm going to take a look at that, do the same trick, connections. I can see the setup time. I can see my 200 code. At this point, if I look at it, right, I again am 13.4 seconds in. So this is, again, a confirmation. Basically, right, this is, this is confirming what Brendan was already, you know, pointing out to us. Everybody seems to be connecting to the east. Now, this is affecting airport desks. Um, I can go and dig in, right? I can find... A little bit more traffic here. Um, we get a 200 response code, open it in, uh, in the trace. Take a look at the chart and HTTP. And we're seeing exactly the same pattern, right? So we see long delays, servers not responding, um, you know, um, very rapidly. All right, back to it. Let's try an IP address in the central region. We're gonna look at 
Dallas Fort Worth next. There we go. And all right, we're checking there. And we're effectively seeing a similar set of, of, of pieces of telemetry here, right? So we have um, this, this is an airport desk again. We're looking at um, we're looking at three seconds, 2.4 milliseconds, 24 connection requests um, are broken. Now let's go and take a look at their sorry, east. So that's confirmed. Let's grab that packet trace. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, I have a suspicion that perhaps um, the, the DNS is not resolving right. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a look at the IPs, the IP connections from Dallas-Fort Worth to our internal DNS server, which is 71.10.4. And we're doing effectively the same thing. So at this point... And I'm going to grab just a short period here. So what I have here is looking at one airport desk reaching out to our internal DNS system that is responsible for load balancing the traffic over our three AWS data centers. Um, this, um, so what you're seeing here is one IP conversation. I've switched to IP conversations here, so I know, you know TCP obviously is not seeing that. I can go ahead, open this one up and download those packets. All right. So what we see in here is a number of DNS requests, a number of DNS requests that are not to steal demo. There we go. Um, this is one that is requesting steal demo.cloud. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a response there. Uh, there we go. There. And this is a response, scrolling down, and there you have it. There's the smoking gun, right? So I am now looking at just packets coming out of um, a central uh, 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 airport desk in Dallas, um, DNS request made to our internal DNS load balancer. The address that is returned is that 18.87 address. So we're seeing that the issue, at least from the perspective of the airport desks, is that DNS is not um, not doing, not, not doing a great job. So now the problem is next are our customers who are using phone apps experiencing this exact same problem. Now recall that at this point, we, um, you know, we don't have phone phones out there, but what we do have is we have a number of, um, synthetic test systems that are simulating that traffic for us. So we can get a feel for how the customer is experiencing this from different areas in the country. I'm going to go ahead, go to the, packets for that and see if we have a similar issue that we're experiencing there. All right. And I'm going to move that new IP. And there's my packets. All right. So we're back in here. Let me grab real quick connections. And there we go. All right, and let's scroll down. Let's grab a response. There's a whole variety of them. Still demo. And there we go. This is a query. Query is for rental app. Let's grab a response. And yep. And scrolling down, and there you have it. Right. So exactly the same. We're getting, um, you know, not just our rental desks, also our customers. There we go. Remove that. Also, our customers are seeing the exact same thing. Right. So we have now confirmed that effectively whomever is making requests out um, to any of our DNS servers is getting a response for the AWS East data center. Now, this is bad. This is, you know, this is clearly the root cause of our um, of our issue. One other thing. There we go. Can take a look exactly at how they are resolving in the public world with Cloudflare. 
running this one more time. And there's our query again. And again, for a rental app, we now move ahead and go find another response in there. And here we go. And again, um, 18.209.231.87. So essentially all of the traffic, no matter where it resolves from and where it comes from is ending up in one place. And that is the AWS East Data Center. Now, um, hopping back, one last thing I'm gonna show you is CPU load on our AWS dashboard. And that's really actually where I'm gonna end. Um, you know, you can see here, the, the system is experiencing extremely high CPU load. You know, it's probably the reason, you know, it's the system is simply completely overloaded. Um, you know, we've analyzed this now from the NetFlow angle, the synthetic test angle, we've analyzed it from, um, uh, from a packet angle. And, uh, and I think we, uh, we have, so, so that's all I had to show in terms of um, the packet perspective. I'm giving it back to you, uh, Phil.